What's up guys, this is Ultima Device Vids, and WWDC 2019 is just over a week away. And of course, at this event, Apple will announce iOS 13. So here's everything that we currently know about iOS 13. There's been tons of rumors circulating, tons of information. In this video, I just want to compile all of it into one video for you guys, so you can know everything, again, that we currently know about iOS 13. And before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video are just rumors. So these are just the expectations that we have for iOS 13, and nothing's going to be confirmed until Apple actually announces it. So definitely take the information in this video with a grain of salt. And before I get into this video, I just want to say all the sources for the information that I'm going to be talking about in this video today will be linked down below in the description, courtesy of Mark Gurman of Bloomberg, Guillermo Rambo of 9to5Mac, Mac Rumors, and iPhone.soft. Again, they'll all be linked down below in the description. I couldn't be more excited to talk to you guys about this, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So without a doubt, the most exciting feature coming to iOS 13 is, without a doubt, dark mode. So finally, a system-wide dark mode is coming that allows all your applications to have a dark theme for easier viewing at nighttime, and also just, you know, if people prefer that theme. Personally, it's just so much easier on the eyes for me. I definitely prefer using a dark mode. And this is something that we've been wanting for years upon years. And Apple is finally going to be delivering most likely with iOS 13. I mean, all the rumors are pointing towards it. Now, in iOS 11, Apple did introduce something called Smart Invert that allows you to basically... Um, it's a smarter version of just inverting the screen, which tries to remove uh, images from being inverted and whatnot. So it kind of works as a dark mode, but it does not work great with so many applications and it's just not that usable, uh, you know, in terms of like daily uses. But this is going to be a legitimate dark mode that's actually going to be designed to be, you know, run on a daily basis. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be uh, compatible with the quote unquote true black for OLED display devices. Uh, it's going to be very similar to the dark mode that we currently have on Mac OS. It's basically just keeping those pixels on, but still having them dark. That's personally fine with me. As long as it's not that blaring white, I'm satisfied. But I know that will be disappointing to some users. And as to be expected, of course, there's going to be a control center toggle for dark mode. So next up, we're expecting cross-platform applications. So basically, this will make it very easy for your favorite applications that you enjoy on your iPhone and iPad to be easily ported and also used on your Mac. So last year with iOS 12, actually, Apple actually did port over a few different stock applications from the iPhone to the Mac, but this year they're actually going to be making it very easy for developers of App Store apps to port their App Store apps again from iPhones, iPads to the Mac. And this is going to be very helpful. You know, there's a lot of instances in which there's applications that I use on my iPhone that I really just want to use on my Mac. Uh, Snapchat's one of them. I don't really know how that would work if that's going to be an option. That's just one that comes to mind. Um, because, you know, these devices are so similar. We get our iMessages on our iPhones, our iPads, and our Macs. So it kind of would make sense to just kind of be able to use the same applications on both. So this is definitely a good step forward. And here's another very long overdue feature that I'm very happy is coming to iOS 13. And that's, of course, a redesigned volume HUD. So, of course, when you adjust the volume normally in iOS, you get that pop-up that appears in the middle of the screen that, you know, kind of blocks, interrupts whatever you're doing. It's just very outdated. This should have been fixed years ago. But, you know, there is word that Apple is working on a new volume HD, which I assume, I hope, is not going to interrupt your, you know, display. So many applications in the App Store, YouTube, Instagram, have all moved that, that volume HD to the, you know, top of the screen, the status bar. And I imagine this is going to be something like that, and it's about time Apple caught up. And moving on, it looks like iOS 13 is going to include something called a sleep mode. So basically, this is going to tie in with the bedtime feature that currently exists inside the clock app. Basically, if you go to the bedtime tab in the clock app, it'll ask you what time you are aiming to wake up. And with this sleep mode, there's going to be more advanced sleep tracking. And it's also going to mute incoming notifications, turn, you know, the do not disturb mode on and make the lock screen kind of blacked out. So it just kind of sounds like a great, you know, sleeping companion to get that sleep tracking info more advanced in addition to kind of, you know, silencing your device and muting notifications. And there's also apparently going to be a control center toggle for this, which is really good to know. Next up, I want to talk to you guys about the iPad on iOS 13 because iOS 13 has a lot of iPad exclusive features. So for individual applications on the iPad in iOS 13, there's going to be actually multi-tab view. So you're going to be able to open up multiple different instances of the same app basically. So kind of similar to how you're able to open up several different tabs within Finder on the Mac, you're going to be able to do that within applications on the iPad. So we can open up different tabs within different apps, which is going to be very useful. So it looks like iPad applications in iOS 13 are going to support multiple windows. So basically, you're going to be able to detach certain parts of the app into multiple different windows and manipulate them, move them around and use them simultaneously. And basically, once you detach these different sections of the app, you'll be able to stack 
uh, these different cards on top of each other and swipe to close some. So basically, it just sounds like the iPad in iOS 13 is becoming much more professional oriented with a lot of these, you know, computer esque type features. So apparently, the multitasking, uh, you know, view or the app switch, or whatever you want to call it, is going to be getting a redesign, revamp in iOS 13. Also, apparently, the home screen is going to have a, you know, kind of a revamp and redesign on the iPad as well, which is very exciting to hear. And also, Guillermo Rambo has actually mentioned on Twitter that the springboard or the home screen in iOS 13 has been refactored into multiple frameworks and processes. So I'm not entirely sure what that means at this moment, but it's very exciting to hear that. Hopefully, we get some sort of major, you know, refresh on the home screen, uh, not only for iPads, but hopefully for iPhone as well, but we'll have to see. There's also going to be a new gesture on the keyboard on the iPad to undo and redo things. Of course, normally in iOS, you basically just shake the device and you have the option to undo, but you're going to be able to tap with three fingers on the display and swipe either left to undo or right to redo. That's a nice change. There's also apparently going to be a new way to select, a gesture-based way to select multiple items and basically highlight them and get information based on those items, like a you know collective you know information group, and also move all those items at once. So again, similar to like Finder on the Mac on the iPad as well, which I'll be excited to see. And it also looks like there's going to be a stock built-in way to mirror your Mac display to your iPad. And this is, of course, something that applications like Luna Display is able to do. But again, this is going to be Apple stock built-in implementation of it. It's also looking like you're going to be able to control your Mac through the Apple Pencil, of course, on the iPad display when it's being mirrored from the Mac. So that's kind of a cool combination to have there as well. Also for iPad users, it looks like Mobile Safari is actually going to load the desktop version of certain websites when it, you know, is necessary. So there's various websites that, of course, on such a large display would just work a whole lot better in desktop versus mobile. So this is definitely going to be a good improvement for iPad users. And also speaking of Mobile Safari, Apple has apparently been testing a download manager that allows you to actually see all your files in one place and manage them. Again, just similar to, you know, any download manager like on Safari on the computer or anything like that. It's so unknown if this is actually coming in iOS 13, and you know I'm not sure if this is specific to iPad. So it sounds like they're definitely taking steps towards making the device, you know, maybe more of a computer replacement, just more professional, you know, oriented. So of course that's going to be, you know, targeted at iPad Pros, of course. So next up, I want to talk about the iOS 13 Messages application. So it looks like in iOS 13, there's going to be a new feature that allows you to set a profile picture in the Messages app, and also to make up a display name, and you'll actually be able to determine who sees that and who doesn't see that. This is something that's reminiscent of WhatsApp as well, so it definitely just sounds like some good changes to the Messages application. So the Mail application is also receiving some improvements in iOS 13. So the iOS 13 Mail application will organize your messages into categories such as quote-unquote marketing, purchases, travel, not important, and more. There will also be apparently a read later queue in the mail application. There's also going to be the option to mute incoming notifications for emails that arrive in certain threads. And there's also going to be an option that allows you to block emails from certain contacts. So once again, all welcome changes. So it looks like the share sheet in iOS 13 is actually going to be getting a whole lot smarter. So now when you're sharing either photos or text through the share sheet, it's actually going to suggest specific people to send certain things to. And it's looking like the widgets page in iOS 13 is getting a visual refresh just to kind of help it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. And that's, of course, when you swipe to the left on the home screen or the lock screen or the cover sheet, whatever you want to call it, all those widgets will be getting a visual refresh. So it looks like there's going to be a new animation when invoking the multitasking pane or the app switcher in iOS. So that's always good to see, just little tweaks like that. Hopefully it's a little bit faster. And we're also expecting a redesigned CarPlay interface as well. So it looks like Apple's going to be merging the Find My Friends application and the Find My iPhone application into one app in iOS 13. And this actually does make a whole lot of sense. I've actually wondered why these applications are separate in the past, so... Sounds like that makes sense. And this is something that's very interesting. There's also apparently going to be this new feature that allows you to track your devices, even if they're not connected to cellular and not connected to Wi-Fi, by quote-unquote leveraging other nearby devices. I have no idea how that's going to work. I've never really heard of anything like that, but that definitely sounds quite interesting. So I'm definitely intrigued to see what that is. So the mass application is also going to get some good improvements. It's going to be easier to quickly get navigation, you know, directions to locations like home, work, these locations that you just want to be able to plug and play, go straight to those frequently, you know, visited places. It'll just be easier to get those directions easily. Also, other frequently visited locations will be grouped more efficiently in addition to apparently the addition of photos being added to these frequently visited locations. So, you know, that just makes them easier to identify and just, you know, all around sounds like some good changes to the Maps app.
The Reminders application is also getting a refresh, which is well needed, I think. So it's apparently going to have a new grid view, and it's going to show the following options. Quote, unquote, tasks to be finished today, all tasks, scheduled tasks, and flagged tasks. So I don't really use the Reminders application as it is right now, but maybe this will change that. The Apple Books app will have a new feature that encourages you to kind of continue reading, in addition to a progress checker for your books. And if you guys use security cameras around your house or in your house, it sounds like the home application in iOS 13 is going to make things a lot easier for you. It's going to be better integrated with security cameras, and it's also going to be a feature that allows you to access previous recordings without having to go to a different third-party app for the you know security camera that you use. So you'll be able to access those previous recordings right within the home application, again, without having to go to a different app, which sounds great. The health application will include an improved daily activity view, in addition to more comprehensive results on track menstrual cycles and something that I'm very excited about is the new hearing health section of the health app that's rumored to be coming so it looks like hearing health will measure how loud you play music through your headphones and also uh, maybe the ambient environment around you and how that impacts your music so I'm really hoping that this feature kind of helps motivate me and many others into not blasting the music so loud through my headphones I do that all the time it's just kind of mindless so Hopefully this can help out with that, but regardless, sounds very interesting. iOS 13 is also expected to bring speed improvements for devices, so this is great to hear. I mean, iOS 12 last year brought a ton of speed improvements, and that was kind of the primary focus of iOS 12 was performance, but it's really good to see, in addition to a ton of new features that Apple's going to be bringing with iOS 13, that Apple's still focusing on, you know, improving that speed in iOS. So it's also looking like iOS 13 is going to come stock with a swipe keyboard installed or swipe style keyboard. So, of course, uh, Android devices have had this for years, uh, literally so many years, basically just the ability to form words by sliding your finger on the keyboard rather than tapping. And of course, you could also get this from the App Store. That's been available for uh, years. Ever since iOS 8, you can download swipe keyboards from the App Store. But again, this is going to be native, built in, so it'll make it a little bit easier to access that. And of course, Apple's implementation of the swipe keyboard will probably be different than any others. So it looks like the iOS 13 settings app is getting a new font management system. So of course, hopefully that'll make things easier in terms of managing fonts on iOS. And some other random little tidbits of information here. Apple is apparently doubling the live photo time from three seconds to six seconds now. So just longer live photos. Also, the Hey Siri feature is apparently going to be getting better at filtering out background noise. So hopefully maybe it doesn't activate quite as much on accident. So it looks like screen time is getting some improvements, uh, specifically for children. So... For instance, you could set it so your child is only able to contact certain people after a certain time in the day. So maybe only contact you and a few others after, let's say, like 8 p.m. And then as soon as it's the daytime, that restriction is lifted. And next up, I want to talk about device support. This is something that's very important. Now, I must say that the rumors on this topic are definitely a little bit more, you know, up in the air, not quite as concrete. So just take this with a grain of salt. So it's looking like, based on the current information that we have, that iOS 13 is going to drop support for the iPhone 6. 6 Plus, the iPhone 6, the iPhone 5S, the iPhone SE, the original iPad Air, and the iPad Mini 2. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like those devices are going to be getting iOS 13 as an update. Now, you know, of course, the older devices make sense. However, the iPhone SE was actually released in 2016 and has the same internals as the iPhone 6S. So dropping this device definitely seems quite unfair as this, again is a recent device and it's very powerful now i assume if apple decides to do this the reason that they would is because the iphone se has that four inch display uh, of course the same display size as the iphone 5s and they might just not want to have to design ios 13 for such an old display so that might be why but it just seems a little unfair as again it has all that modern hardware the same as the 6s but of course we'll have to see what happens all right guys that pretty much wraps it up for this video thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys learned some new information throughout this and i hope you're as excited as i am for ios 13 it's going to be a big great release stay tuned of course as soon as apple announces ios 13 i'm going to be showing you guys all kinds of cool stuff with ios 13 so so stay tuned for those future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.